Hi there. Time for a quick report on programming languages in 2023. And I'm going to focus today just on the top 10 languages as I measure them on my Languish website. There are lots of other ways to measure languages and lots of other amazing languages out there. But this is what I'm going to focus on for today. And on my site, my default scoring is an average of GitHub issues and stars, as well as Stack Overflow questions for each quarter in question, and not a sum total of everything up to the current date. And worth pointing out that we get different answers depending on what we focus on. And note that there's other great sites and data sources out there for other ways of ranking programming languages. But if we take out Markdown and HTML, the top 10 as I have them listed right now are Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, C++, Go, C, Rust, and PHP. And note that in quarter three, Rust was actually just barely ahead of C for a minute. We'll see how those trends continue in the future. But going straight into Python, it had a 3.12 release in 2023. Some of the highlights include override decorator for static typing, more mainstream syntax for type parameters, and more flexible F strings, where you can have quotes inside of your curlies, inside of your quotes now. And in terms of the internals, they're trying to help you take more advantage of multiple CPU cores with a per interpreter global interpreter lock. Although note there's some limitations of how you can get access to it in the 3.12 release so far. Moving on to ECMAScript or JavaScript, a number of features came out in the 2023 release and others have already been standardized for the 2024 release. But to focus on a couple of these, they've now standardized support for hash bang or shebang comments at the top of your scripts. And they have a group by feature for arrays, which personally I find really handy sometimes. And then moving on to the static typing version of JavaScript, TypeScript has had a number of releases like usual. And oftentimes they focus a lot on a various subtle refinements to how you do your typing or to the infrastructure of the project. But sometimes you also see interesting things like support for decorators or other new ECMAScript features. And it is often fun to label a new major version number. Moving on to Java, they had a minor release with mostly preview features and also a long-term support or LTS release in the form of JDK 21 that finalized a number of very important features such as pattern matching and virtual threads. Virtual threads provides features somewhat similar to what Go has in the form of lightweight stackful coroutines. And the pattern matching switch, including destructuring that they've added, means Java joins the likes of C Sharp and Python, among other mainstream languages that support pattern matching. And given that, I expect this kind of support to continue to progress among other mainstream languages. Moving on to C Sharp, .NET 8 came out last year, which is also a new long-term support release for them. And separate from any language feature, they provided standardized native ahead of time compiling deployment, or in other words, take your C Sharp or other .NET application and publish it just as a native binary. There are some limits to what .NET features you can use in this, but it ought to be very helpful for many use cases. And along with .NET 8, we got C Sharp 12 and a new release of F Sharp. Among features in C Sharp 12, we have primary constructors, which might look familiar from other languages such as Scala or Kotlin. And we also have lighter weight syntax for collection expressions. You get to feel a little more like JavaScript or Python here. And then C++ had a major new standard last year in the form of C++ 23. It includes a lot of things, and it's worth looking at your compiler to see what it supports. Among the many features included are modules for the standard library, so you can just import them, and print line features, so that now your Hello World can look like this in C++, which might be a lot more familiar looking to people from other languages. That print feature includes templated things as well. C++23 also added sized floating point types and an expected type, which is sort of like Rust's result or either from Haskell, where you can say that you want double as the primary return type, but there might be a parse error instead. And given that a lot of places still don't really like exception handling in C++, this kind of feature built into the standard library might be useful for people. They also finished standardizing multidimensional array access with square brackets. And again, there were many other features as well in the center library and language. Go had two releases, including a preview and general availability of profile guided optimization, as well as a preview of a change for loop variable capture. So that when you have a closure inside of a loop, you would get a new instance for each iteration 
instead of a common one shared across all. And then I do agree that's quite a gotcha in many programming languages. I'm curious to see how this turns out. Now the C language in 2023 was working on finalizing a new specification as well, with many new features again, including a lot of new keywords like true and false, align as, align of, bool, static assert, const expr, null pointer, and more. For lots more detail on the C23 standard, go see project editor Janid Manid's blog, where you get a lot of detail on a lot of features, including the new limited form of type inference for your local variables. Yes, in C. Then moving on to Rust, there was a bit of controversy and shakeup in the project leadership structure, but focusing more on the language itself, they had regular releases as usual, and you've got to dig through them all to see what there is that's interesting to you. One thing I noticed quite a bit was a lot of work on Cargo, which is the package manager and build system for Rust. And in the latest release of the year, on December 28th, they included a rather substantial feature in the form of async fn and infiltrate return position in your traits. And this is a case of what you see sometimes in languages where there's things you might just expect to work, but they didn't. So this ought to make some people's lives just simpler. And then finally, from the top 10 from Languish from the end of 2023, we had PHP 8.3 release, which in addition to performance improvements and so on, added typed class constants, whereas there was no type before on it, and also override attribute, so it's joining Python and various other languages and making overrides explicit. And as I said, that rounds up the top 10 from Languish for the end of 2023. Now, if you know my channel, I typically like to cover a lot more languages than just the most popular ones. And so as a bit of a preview or a spoiler alert, some languages did rather well last year, including CMake and GDScript. GDScript is the scripting language for the Godot game engine. And for people who pay attention to the industry, there's a reason why it shot up so much last year. But I won't go into that. Just pointing out that with its strong growth in the latest quarter, it passed up a number of other languages that are somewhat well known. So I'm curious to see where Godot and GDScript go in the future. But the languages that it passed up last quarter include Perl, Julia, Elixir, MATLAB, VimScript, VB.net, and Haskell. Again, we'll see where it goes in the future, and I hope to do more updates from other languages before too long. But I wanted to get this video out while I could. I hope it's been fun, and if you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye, y'all.